So far, our programs have done one thing. When they ran, they printed text to the terminal. The text we had was fixed and could not change. If that's all computers could do, they wouldn't be very interesting. In order for computers to do things of value, they need to work with data. Data is any piece of information. When you think of your favorite social media account, there's a rough skeleton of the app. Then each part of the skeleton is filled in with data specific to you. Other users have the same app skeleton, but different data filled in. You get to submit new data whenever you make a post. Maybe some funny joke or a strong political opinion. You can pretty much type any content you want, and the app knows how to deal with it. How to capture it from you, how to send it to the cloud, how to relay it to other people's devices, and then finally, how to display it in their app skeleton. This same flow works for anything that you can type into the app. If programmers had to create a different version of the code to handle each unique piece of content that users could think of, it wouldn't work very well. So programmers use a concept to represent arbitrary pieces of data called a variable. Variables are just a name, a name for some piece of data that can change, that can vary. Each part of the app skeleton is represented by a variable, basically a named placeholder for what should be there. The content of each post is represented by a variable. Each user's name, represented by a variable. This part here, who's showing who's currently logged in, variable. Every image, including all the images used for people's display pics, more variables. In this video, we're going to explore how you can add variables to your programs that let you represent data that can change. You work in HR and are responsible for creating the offer letters that are sent to candidates the company wants to hire. The letters are almost identical, except that you need to change a couple of details from the letter, like the hourly wage and the start date. Lately, there's been so many offer letters sent out that there's been a few mistakes since it was easy to miss something. We sent out an offer with the wrong hourly rate and it was really awkward. The goal here is to have a template that lets us easily change key parts of the letter. To make sure that you don't miss something, we want to define the key values in one centralized spot. We'll do that by giving each important piece of data an easy to understand name, and above the letter, we'll list each name and define what each name should be. This way, whenever we generate a letter, each of our placeholders are replaced by the current value we set. If we change the value of one of them, like hourly rate, then the generated letter is altered too. Each of these names are variables and hold this value assigned to them. Let's see how we can do this in code. We have some code here. When you run it, it prints out the content of the offer letter. We have a few key parts here that we want to define from one spot so we don't forget to change them. The number of expected hours, the hourly rate, and the start date. Let's start with the number of expected hours. Whenever you want to create a variable, you need to choose two things. The first is the name for the variable. In math, a variable is usually a single letter, like H for hours. But in code, we want to use whole words for variables, and we try to be descriptive so that it's easy to understand what the variable represents. So for our variable, we'll use the name hours. The second thing we need to decide is the type of the variable. We need to tell C what kind of data we want to store in the variable. For now, we're going to learn about one type, int. Int stands for integer, which is the math name for whole numbers. This means we're telling C that we want this variable to hold data like this. But it doesn't support data like this. We'll put the type in front of the variable. Together, the type and the name form the declaration of the variable. It tells C that you're introducing the variable to the program. So now we have a beautiful variable which can hold a whole number, but we haven't told the program what value the variable should hold. To assign a value of 32 to our hours variable, we create a new line, hours equals 32. In C, an equals assigns the value on the right side into the variable on the left side. You can't flip these. Right always goes into left. These lines execute in order. So if we were to run our program in slow motion, 
It first runs our declaration line, which simply introduces the variable but doesn't have any specific value yet. Then we execute the next line, and we give it the value that we expect. This also means that we can't reverse the order of these lines. If we tried to assign a value to our hours variable before we declared it, we'd get an error when we tried to compile. That's because at this point, the hours variable doesn't exist yet. So now that we have our hours variable defined, we need to use its value instead of the 32 in our printf statement. We can tell printf that we want to use the value of a variable by inserting a special placeholder where we want the value to show up. We'll replace our 32 with percentage %d, which is the placeholder for an integer value. If you're curious why it's percentage %d, I'll put the reason below in the description. Printf will replace percentage %d with a value, but we need to tell it which variable to get it from. We do that by adding it to our printf statement like this after the quotes. And don't forget the comma that separates it. So now, when printf runs, it'll grab whatever value is in our hours variable and replace the percentage %d with it. Let's run our program and see what happens. Like before, we create our hours variable, then we assign our value of 32, then we start printing out the text from each printf statement one by one. Once we get to the printf with our hours variable, as expected, we see the current value of hours, 32, in place of the percentage %d. So now, if we were to change the value that we assigned to hours, let's say to 25, then when we run our program, we'll get a 25 in the printed letter. We also need to regularly change the hourly rate. Thankfully, we only give offers of whole dollar amounts. So we really only need a variable for the dollar amount and can ignore the cents. We can create a new variable, rate, to hold the hourly rate. We'll assign a value of 28 to it, and then we can replace just the 28 with our percentage %d placeholder. This works even though it's smushed against the other stuff. Then we'll feed our variable into printf. Now, when we run the program, we create our hours variable, then our rate variable, hours gets its value of 25, and rate its value of 28. Then the program spits out the letter as we expect. For the start, month, date, and year, we need to create three different variables. If we want, C actually lets us declare multiple variables on one line like this. It just makes it a little bit more compact. Then we'll assign our variables. Now we need to update our printf statement. For the other cases, we only had one placeholder in the printf statement. But for the start date, we need three. The month, the day, and year. That's okay, printf supports multiple placeholders, so we can put one for the month, day, then year. And then we put our three variables after the text like we did before, separated by commas. The order of the placeholders and variables matters here. The first placeholder is replaced by the value from the first variable, the second from the second variable, and the third from the third. We also repeat the start date here. Since all the values are the same, we can reuse the same variables here. We'll swap each for their placeholders and then add the same variables to this printf statement. Now we've completed all our goals. When we run the code, we see that all five of our variables are created. Then they all get their values assigned. And then the letter gets generated with the current values. Now, whenever we need a new offer letter, we can simply tweak the values as we need and run our program to get a new letter. Now you've seen how to use variables to store and use some data. Gary's black market squash operation didn't pan out, so now he's on the straight and narrow. To try to get ahead, Gary has a bright idea, to get lots of different jobs at the same time but use programs with variables to automate most of his work away. On the site, each level you complete helps Gary achieve his dreams. There's a couple of details we need to know about naming variables. 
I said that we need to give our variables good descriptive names, but there are a few restrictions that we need to know. First, variables can only contain letters, numbers, and underscores. This means you can't have a variable with spaces or special characters. Trying to do so will result in a compiler error. So these variables are fine, but these will cause an issue. And also, variables can't start with numbers. Since we can't use spaces, two major styles are used for multi-word variables. The first major style is called camel case, where, like a camel's humps, subsequent words are capitalized. We'll be using camel case for this video series. The other style is called snake case, where underscores are used instead of spaces. And lastly, variables are case sensitive. This means that variable int a is a different variable than int capital A. This means if you mistype a variable's name like this, the compiler will say it doesn't recognize the variable called year with uppercase Y, since you've only told it about the variable called year with lowercase Y. Because of confusion like this, purposely declaring multiple variables with the same name but different case is considered bad practice, something to avoid. Mm -hmm.